Now we are going to discuss the topics of design process and the determination of equivalent single axle load. The design process. Three main steps in designing a new road pavement. Number one, estimate the amount of traffic and the cumulative number of equivalent standard axles that will use the road over the selected design life. Assess the strength of the subgrade soil over which the road is to be built. Select the most economical combination of pavement materials and layer thicknesses that will provide satisfactory use over the design life of the pavement. Now here you can see that uh, there is the term cumulative number of equivalent standard axles. So in the design process, we consider standard axle and we convert all the axles of different vehicles into the standard axles. So in this way, you will be having the cumulative number of equivalent standard axles and that number will be used in the designing. Repetition of load. When load is passing on a road again and again, the wheels of vehicle may damage the road. When a wheel passes on the road one time, damage will be very small. But when passes on the road many times, the structure of the road damages. Single application of wheel load may cause very small deformation to the road pavement or to subgrade, but the repeated application of the same wheel load may cause appreciable permanent deformation in the pavement or subgrade and may become the cause of the road failure. Permanent deformation may be due to accumulation of the plastic deformation due to fatigue in the paving materials or subgrade or both. Now, what is fatigue? Fatigue is the repeated application of the load. It is the phenomena of repetitive load induced cracking due to repetitive stress below the ultimate strength of the material. Fatigue relates to the soil failure due to repeated loads. Effect of load impact. Sudden application of load in very short time is called impact load. The effect of impact of load is maximum at joints which are present in rigid pavements it may result in differential settlement of slabs, which is very dangerous. It is reasonable to make no allowance for the impact when designing roads with well-finished surfaces and in no case to make an allowance greater than 30%. Effect of impact depends on Number one, wheel load, vehicle speed, vehicle characteristics, tire type, road irregularity. So these are the five important points that must be considered in this regard. Axle load and wheel load. In case of highways, Ashto has specified 18,000 pound or 18 caps or 8.165 kilogram or 80 kilonewton or 8 ton as the standard single axle load. Since an axle has two ends, the maximum wheel load can be taken as half of the standard single axle load that is 9,000 pound, 9 caps, 4083 kilogram 40 kilonewton or 4 tons. So keep this thing in the mind that in the case of highways, 
18,000 pound axle load that is considered as the standard axle. Airfields. The design gear load will be that of the heaviest plane which will utilize the field. Gear loads load on one set of wheels generally range between about 8 kips and up to as high as 200 kips. Okay, now we are going to discuss the concept of equivalent single wheel load, ESWL. Actually, this concept was first uh, presented by Boyd and Foster in 1950. And to understand that, I can explain the concept of uh, Boyd and Foster through this particular diagram. Well, just consider one axle. On one side of axle, we are having the two wheels, this one. And on the other side of the axle, somewhere here, we are having the other two wheels. So we are just focusing on these two wheels. And if you just look at these two wheels, uh, there is a clear distance between the wheels, that is D. And center to center distance is S sub D. And the load V load that is P sub D this one and the V load that is this one that is also P sub D and uh, this is the pavement and you can see that uh, this wheel is acting independently and this wheel is acting independently but up to this depth so you can say that up to a depth of d by 2 the two wheels are acting independently and here it is written that no stress overlap if pavement thickness is smaller than d by 2 now from d by 2 to onwards what is happening overlapping of stress says have been started and you can see that a complete overlapping of the stresses at this particular level and this is equal to 2 times of S sub D and you know S sub D this is the center to center distance between the wheels so it means you are having at this particular level the complete stress overlap if pavement thickness is greater than 2 times S sub D now we can show this thing graphically uh, we are having the log scale along x-axis and the vertical axis both here we are having the equivalent single v load and here we are having the depth z so you can see that when z is equal to d by 2 the both wheels are acting independently so the equivalent single v load is p sub d so you can mark this point a and if you just consider the depth equal to 2 times S sub D where you are having the complete stress overlap. So you can see that this point B is there and that is this one is 2 times S sub D and uh, this is 2 PD. That means you are having the combined effect of the two wheels 2 PD. So when you have marked the point A and B on this uh, chart so you can join like this. Now you can see that uh, when you have plotted this line now corresponding to any depth z you can get the equivalent single v load for example you are considering this much depth so corresponding to that you can see that this is the equivalent single v load now in this diagram you can see the v load distribution is shown and you are familiar with that pattern. Equivalent single wheel is the wheel single that produces same stress at any point as produced by two wheels. 
Boyd and Foster in 1950 presented a semi-rational method for determining equivalent single wheel load which had been used by the Corps of Engineers to produce dual wheel design criteria from single wheel criteria. The method assumes that equal single wheel load varies with the pavement as shown in the figure. For thickness smaller than half the clearance between dual tires, the equal single wheel load is equal to one half of the total load, indicating that the subgrade vertical stresses caused by the two wheels do not overlap. For thickness greater than twice the center to center spacing of tires, the equal single wheel load is equal to the total load, indicating that the subgrade stresses due to the two wheels overlap completely. So by assuming a straight line relationship between pavement, thickness and wheel load, on logarithmic scales, the equivalent single wheel load for any intermediate thicknesses can be easily determined. After the equivalent single wheel load for dual wheels is found, the procedure can be applied to tandem wheels. Instead of plotting, it is more convenient to compute the equivalent single wheel load by using this formula. So in the literature, in fact, there are many formulas available to estimate the equivalent single wheel load uh, without plotting. So this is one of them and here in this formula you can see that P sub D that is load on one of the dual tires. That is the pavement thickness in which you are interested. D is the clearance between dual tires. That means the clear distance between the dual tires and S sub D, that is the center or center spacing between dual tires. Now look at this example. A set of dual tires has a total load of 2 PD of 9000 pound or 40 kilo Newton, a contact radius of 4.5 inches or 114 millimeter and a center to center tire spacing S sub D of 13.5 inches or 343 millimeter. Determine the equivalent single wheel load by Boyd and Foster's method for a 13.5 inches that is 343 millimeter pavement. Also calculate equivalent single wheel load analytically. So you can see that uh, <coughs> to get the equivalent single V load graphically, you will have to plot this graph and uh, for the plotting, first you can see this uh, thing that there are two wheels, the loads are 4500 pound, this one and this one and uh, you can see that uh, D is the clearance clear distance between the tires and center to center distance is 13.5 inches. So obviously you can see the contact radius is given and the contact radius is 4.5 inches. So obviously this is 4.5, this is 4.5. So when you are having these dimensions with you, you can determine the D very easily. So ultimately uh, you can plot this diagram and you can see at a depth of D by 2 you are having this point A and that is corresponding to P sub D that is 4500 pounds and uh, corresponding to that uh, equal to 2 times S D you are having this point B and that is corresponding to 2 times P sub D. So by joining this line like this and then considering the pavement thickness which is to be considered in this example that is 13.5 inches so you can get corresponding to 13.5 inches pavement thickness the equivalent single V load that is P. So basically in this case you would see after plotting this graph 
that equivalent single wheel load is coming equal to 7400 pounds or 32.9 kilo newton for 13.5 inches thick pavement so you would find some calculation work on the next slide now analytically to get the equivalent single wheel load you can use this formula and you know here p sub d that is the load on one of the dual tires that is 4500 pound z is the pavement thickness in which we are interested that is 13.5 inches d is the clearance between dual tires and that is obviously 13.5 minus 2 times 4.5 and that is coming equal to 4.5 inches s sub d that is the center to center spacing between dual tires and that is 13.5 inches so just plug in the values you are getting equivalent single wheel load that is 7416.52 pounds as i mentioned earlier that there are different formulas available to estimate the equivalent single wheel load that there is another formula for the determination of the equivalent single wheel load this one so considering this formula when you will substitute the values you are getting the equivalent single wheel load equal to 6546 pounds so in this example we determine the equivalent single wheel load graphically and analytically now let's see Excel configurations. An axle is a central shaft for a rotating wheel or gear. So in this regard, we are having the different axle configuration. You can see single axle with single wheel, single axle with dual wheels. If you are having uh, this type of the arrangement, this is called as a tandem axle. And if you are having the arrangement like this, so this is called as tridom axle. Now this slide is meant for truck configuration. So here you can see, uh, in fact, there are many uh, truck configurations, but uh, these are some of them. Two axle truck, three axle truck, light commercial vehicle again there are two axles in that case five axle truck and this is semi articulated truck and this is four axle semi articulated truck that means this is the tractor and this is the trailer so this can be detached from that so four axle semi articulated Now this slide is very very important as I mentioned the standard axle earlier you can see the definition of the standard axle again single axle with dual wheels carrying a load of 80 kilo newton 8 tons or 18,000 pound is defined as standard axle. So now to onwards keep this thing in the mind that this is the standard axle we are having single axle and dual wheels on both sides you can see and uh, the axle load is 18,000 pound in this case so this is the standard axle so single axle with dual wheels carrying a load of 18,000 pound that is considered as the standard axle Okay, equivalent axle load factor. An equivalent axle load factor, EALF, EALF stands for equivalent axle load factor, defines the damage per pass to a pavement by the axle in question relative to the damage per pass of a standard axle load. Really, 18 capes, 80 kilo or 18,000 pounds single axle load. The design is based on the total number of passes of standard axle load during the design period defined as equivalent single axle load ESAL 
and computed by this formula. Look at this one. Summation of the product of F sub i and N sub i and here and the number of Excel load groups that we are considering and F sub i the equivalent Excel load factor for the ith Excel load group N sub i that is the number of passes of ith Excel load group during the design period. So equivalent single Excel load that is equal to the summation of the product of equivalent Excel load factor multiplied by number of Excels. So to understand this uh, I can explain it like that that uh, all the Excels are to be converted into standard Excels. Let's say there are different groups of Excels. So for every group of Excel we are having one particular factor. This is equivalent Excel load factor. So that factor will be multiplied by the number of such Excels. So in this way you will be having the standard Excels from that. This exercise will be done for the other groups of Excels. Then consider the other group of Excels and carry out the same thing. That means the equivalent Excel load factor will be multiplied by the number of such Excels. So in this way you will be having the products of different uh, you can say equivalent Excel load factors and the number of Excels. So just add them together. So in this way you will be getting the equivalent single Excel load. So in this way we can determine the equivalent single Excel load. So the equivalent Excel load factor depends on the type of pavement, thickness or structural capacity and the terminal locations at which the pavement is considered failed. Most of the equivalent Excel load factors in use today are based on experience. One of the most widely used methods is based on the empirical equation developed from the ASHO road test later you know it has been adopted by ASHTO 1972. The EALF that is the equivalent Excel load factor can also be determined theoretically based on the critical stresses and strains in the pavement and the failure criteria. Now this point is very important that equivalent Excel load factor is also known as damaging factor or equivalence factor. So I will repeat, equivalent Excel load factor is also known as damaging factor or equivalence factor. Or sometimes we call it equivalency factor. So what is the use of equivalent Excel load factor? If we multiply equivalent Excel load factor by the number of Excel, so you will be getting number of standard Excels. So just to convert the given Excels into standard Excels, we are going to use this factor which is called as the equivalent Excel load factor, damaging factor or equivalence factor. It is reasonable to assume that tensile strains are directly proportional to Excel loads or you, we can develop this formula that equivalent Excel load factor that is equal to this. So load on single Excel that is the actual load divided by load on a standard Excel and here we are having a par and dash. For tandem or tritum Excels we can write that equivalent Excel load factor that is equal to load on given Excel that is actual load divided by load on standard Excels. Now here as we are considering the tandem or tritum Excels so here a static showing that having same number of Excels. Comparisons is being drawn between the given Excels and the standard Excels. So in this case we are considering the tandem or tritum Excels. So if you are considering the tandem Excel in the numerator, so you will have to consider the standard tandem Excel in the denominator. If you are considering the 
Rider Maxwell in the numerator. So you will have to consider the load on standard Rider Maxwell's in the denominator. Now there are two approaches. N dash is equal to 4 as per ASHTO, American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. And N dash is equal to 4.5 according to road note 31. So in this regard, sometimes we, we use the terms power 4 method or power 4 formula that if you are using the ASHTO approach. And in the case of road note 31, obviously that power is 4.5. Now look at this example. Here in this example you can see a truck is shown and uh, you can see that uh, we are having single axle here and here you can see we are having these two axles close to each other, two axles over here. And uh, look at this one, that uh, the load through this uh, set of axles, we are having 151 kilonewton or 34,000 pound. Here again, 151 kilonewton, 34,000 pound. So basically, tandem axle this is tandem axle this is another tandem axle and this is a single axle here the load is 54 kilonewton uh, or you can say 12,000 pound and if you just consider the gross weight in kilonewton it is coming 356 kilonewton and in pounds 80,000 pound actually uh, you will have to determine the truck factor that means the equivalency factor for this vehicle and what to do first determine the equivalence factor and uh, you know equivalence factor equivalence factor is 1.10 if we just consider the table tables are available and uh, through the tables corresponding to the axles, different axles, you can get the equivalence factor. So the equivalence factor is 1.10 corresponding to 34,000 pound uh, tandem axle and uh, corresponding to 34,000 pound tandem axle again it is 1.10 and uh, a single axle which is having 12,000 pound load the equivalence factor is 0.19. So if you just add all these so that is 2.39 so this is the truck factor that means the equivalency factor for this particular vehicle. Now, if we use the power four method as per ASHTO <coughs> guide, so if you just use that formula that I, sh I have shown on the previous slide, you will be getting the answer of 1.10. Keeping this thing in the mind, that here we are considering the tandem axle. So load in the given axle is 34,000. And in the denominator, we will be having the standard tandem axle that is 33,200 pound. And then considering the power 4, you will be getting the value 1.10. Same value will be coming over here. But here you can see that single axle is there. So obviously here 12,000 pound will be used in the numerator and in the denominator, the standard axle, single axle that is 18,000 pound. So you will be getting the value of 0 0.20. If you just add them together, so the truck factor is coming equal to 2.4. So that is very, very close to that. So if you are having the access to the table, the table developed by the ASHTO for different uh, axles, you can get the equivalence factor directly without any problem. But if that table is not with you, then you can estimate uh, the equivalency factor by using power four method and you, are, you can see that you are getting almost the same truck factor. So truck factor is the load equivalency factor or simply the equivalency factor for the given vehicle. 
So you can see that the standard single axle 18,000 pound, standard tandem axle 33,200 pound, and the standard tridem axle 47,600 pound. These loads can be considered in the formulas. Well, here if you just look at this calculation, this is only meant for the standard tandem axle. You can see that uh, in the case of standard tandem axle, you are having uh, 1.10 from the table developed by Ashto, the equivalent uh, C factor, that is 1.10. So in this case, the given load is 34,000 and par 4, and in the denominator, the standard tandem axle load. So from here you can see that it is coming 33,200 pound and uh, that is written over here. So it is, this calculation is just for the verification of this. So in this case either by using the equivalency factor from the table or by using the par 4 method the truck factor is coming equal to 2.4 or 2.39. Traffic terms and concepts. The question arises that why do we need to concern ourselves with traffic when we design pavements? The answer is traffic is what loads the pavement. So you can see that different vehicles which are moving on the surface of the pavement. So you can see that uh, load is being transferred through these vehicles to the pavement. So traffic load are cyclic and repetitious. So we have already discussed this thing. Repeated cyclic load on a structure eventually result in structural fatigue. And uh, we see the result of this fatigue as pavement damage or distress like that. Concept of load equivalency and standard unit load or configuration used in pavement design technology. Some important points are mentioned over here. Heavy vehicles caused damage to pavements. Heavier the load per axle, the more will be the damage. In order to assess the damage caused by the many different types of configuration of vehicles, one specific load or configuration has been adopted as the standard. The standard adopted is the 18,000 pound single axle load. So you can see that this is the standard axle. The dual wheels each transmit 9,000 pound load to the pavement. And look at this one. Standard vehicle is that one for which the equivalence factor is 1. So when the equivalence factor of the vehicle is 1, so you can say that that is the standard vehicle. A load equivalency factor gives the number of repetitions of the standard load or configuration that would cause an equivalent amount of damage as one pass of the specific vehicle. For example, a load equivalency factor of 2.5 means that one pass of specific vehicle causes an equivalent amount of damage as two and a half passes of the standard vehicle. So that is the meaning of 2.5 if the load equivalency factor of the vehicle is 2.5. Now we are going to discuss three important terms ESAL, ITN and DTN. First look at ESAL that is the equivalent single axle load 
the standard load and axle configuration to which all other load and axle configurations are converted when evaluating traffic loads for pavement structural design. ITN. ITN stands for initial traffic number. The average number of equivalent single axle loads per day in the first year of pavement design analysis period. That is called as initial traffic number. Now look at the DTN, that is the design traffic number. The average number of equivalent single axle loads per day over the entire pavement design analysis period. The total equivalent single axle load application over the design analysis period divided by the number of traffic days. Now, one example is given. Let's say you are having this much equivalent single axle load over 20 years. So if you just divide this figure by 20, the answer is coming 300,000 equivalent single axle loads per year. Or you can take uh, 300 truck days, that means out of 365 days, we are having the 300 working days. So if we divide this figure by 300, so you can say that uh, 1,000 equivalent single axle loads per day so I will repeat that uh, originally we are having this much equivalent single axle loads for a period of 20 years. When we divide this figure by 20, you are getting 300,000 equivalent single axle loads per year. Or you can say it is equal to 1,000 equivalent single axle loads per day for 300 truck days per year. So it means this number, which is uh, basically associated with the design. So this is called as DTN, that is 1000 in this example. So this is DTN design traffic number. Okay, now load distribution through the pavement structure. So you can see that this type of the pattern of loading, load distribution is there. So maximum stress is involved in the top part of the pavement, so high strength materials are needed in this, especially the top part. While well, the typical assumptions are multi-layered elastic system, sub-base, base course, asphalt concrete surface is infinite in the horizontal direction, subgrade is infinite in the vertical and horizontal direction. So these are the assumptions, the typical assumptions that we consider in the analysis of the pavement. Some other important things which I mentioned on this slide contain both the horizontal and vertical strains below the set values that will cause excessive cracking. These criteria are considered in terms of repeated load application because the accumulated repetitions of traffic loads are of significant importance to the development of cracks and permanent deformation of the pavement. This figure is also very useful showing this thing that under the wheel, just under the wheel in the pavement, we are having the compression. And just below that, you can see here we are having the tension. But if you just look at uh, some other part, uh, some other section away from the wheel here or here, you can see the opposite is there. That means uh, at the top, top we are having the tension and uh, here we are having the compression. Estimating accumulated wheel load repetitions. Traffic characteristics. The traffic characteristics are determined in terms of the number of repetitions of an 18,000 pound, 80 kilonewtons single axle load applied to the pavement on two sets of dual tiles. Uh, this is basically the standard axle which is shown over here. Uh, the tire contact area, each 4.5 inches or 11 centimeter radius. 
and 13.5 inches apart or 33 centimeter apart. Well, this point is important at contact pressure of 70 pound per square inch. And we know that equivalent single axle load, that is ESAL, premise or the logic, the effect of an, any load on the performance of a pavement can be represented in terms of the number of single applications of an 18,000 pound single axle. The meaning of this sentence is that you will have to convert all the axles into standard axles. Well, if you just look at the information which is given related to the standard axle, so there are four tires. The contact area is obviously of one tire is pi by pi r square, that is the contact area. So you can see there are four tires, so this is the area which is coming the total contact area from the four tires. Uh, obviously the total single axle load will be that this total contact area will be multiplied by the contact pressure of 70 pound per square inch. So that is coming approximately equal to 18,000 pound. So load equivalency factor, use this if you know the axle load. So this is the table developed by the ASHTO and uh, you can see that uh, for different gross axle loads in pounds or in kilonewton so this is the column <coughs> which is meant for single axle tandem axle and tridem axle so by using this table uh, you can determine the load equivalency factor very easily obviously the traffic mix cars buses single unit trucks semis etc must be known because their gross axle loads are different. Vehicle classification counts are needed. Also needed is the axle load data. The reason for having truck weighing stations on major highways. I'm sure you have seen uh, the truck weighing stations on the motorways. So that, uh, you know, truck weighing station is meant to record the data. That is the axle load data of the different trucks. How to estimate the traffic mix if field data are not available? In this case, Excel loads data must be available. Table 20.4, this one can help you estimate breakdown of truck types in percentages. Well, you can see here we are having the different categories for single unit trucks, 2XL, 4 tire, 2XL, 6 tire, 3XL or more and here all single units and then the multiple unit trucks 4XL or less, 5XL, 6XL or more and all multiple units and then there is a, a row for all trucks. So here we are having the different uh, systems interstate, other principal arteries, minor arteries arterial, collector roads, major, minor. So let's say you are considering the interstate highway and in that particular case, you can take two XL four tire vehicles as 43% of the total traffic. This as 8%, this as 2%. And if you just all that, that is coming equal to 53. As far as the multiple unit trucks are concerned, you may take 5% for 4XL or less, 41 for 5XL and for 6XL or more one. So if you just add them, so it is coming 47. So 47 plus 53, that is coming 100. So uh, if field data are not available, then you can use this table uh, to estimate the traffic mix for the pavement design. How to estimate equivalent single axle load if axle loads are not known? The equivalent 18,000 pound loads can also be determined from the vehicle type if the axle load is unknown by using a truck factor for that vehicle type. The truck factor is defined as the number of 18,000 pound single load applications caused by a single passage of a vehicle. 
So we can write the formula for the truck factor as this. Summation of the product or number of axles and multiplied by load equivalency factor divided by number of vehicles. So table 20.5 that is on the next slide gives truck factor that is they are computed based on previous research data. Remember this formula as the definition of the truck factor. You may not actually compute it unless you are determining typical truck factors for your study area. So distribution of truck factors for different classes of highways and vehicles. So here you can see that the truck factors are given for different categories of vehicles. So let's say you are considering the interstate highway so you can pick the truck factors by consulting this column. And uh, there is one thing, all trucks. That means when you are not considering the different classes or different categories of the vehicle, so in that particular case, Astro is recommending 0.52, which can be used as the overall truck factor for all vehicles. So for rural interstates, one single truck is considered to have 0.52 truck factor. Count the total number of trucks and multiply it by 0.52 to find out equivalent single axle load for that section. Determining the accumulated equivalent single axle load. So we must know design period, traffic growth rate, and design lane factor. Usually a 20 year design period is used. Traffic growth rates can be obtained from the planning division of the state, DOT. DOT means Department of Transportation. Well, here you can see the table 20.6, uh, uh, which will give you the growth factor. Uh, the table is shown partly over here. This column is design period in years, one, two, three, four, like that. And here this column is no growth in the traffic. So in that particular, this column will be used here 2% growth, 4% growth and so on. So in this way, you can see that when you are having the 4% growth and uh, after uh, considering the seven, design, seven years as the design period, so you can see that the growth factor is 7.90. Now this table is also important and uh, look at this table 20.7 uh, percentage of total truck traffic on design lane now what is design lane definition is given design lane pavement design is done for the highest loading case and that is considered as the design lane so the design lane factor that is pavement design is done for the highest loading case that is the design lane typically the outer lane is subject to highest loading. So you can see that number of traffic lanes, two direction. If you are having the two, in that case, we are considering this design lane factor F sub D as uh, 50 or you can say 0 0.50. And uh, when you are having the four total number of lanes, in that case, uh, the range is from 35 to 48% and uh, you can take the 45 value generally we consider 45 percent in that case and when you are having six or more lanes in that case the range is 25 to 48 percent and usually we take 40 percent so these are the percentages 50 percent or you can say 0.5 45 percent or 0.45 40 percent or you can take it as 0.4 and then look at the factor of the, uh, the formula of the growth factor. This is the formula of the growth factor. And here you can see that uh, R is equal to the rate divided by 100. And uh, G sub JT, that is basically the growth factor for a given growth rate J and design period T. So if you just look at the formula of the growth factor again, 
you can see R, you can see N. So R is the rate of growth expressed as fraction and N means the design period in years. So in this way you can calculate the growth factor by using this formula or by consulting this table you can get the growth factor directly. For example here you can see that we consider the 4% uh, rate of growth but in uh, that is this column is to be considered and we consider the design period of 7 years so the growth factor is 7.90. So either by using this table you can get the growth factor or you can use this formula to calculate the growth factor yourself. Now look at this table 20.3. Uh, I sh showed this table partly on one of the previous slides. So you can see that Excel load in pounds and then it equivalent Excel load factors are given in the case of single Excel, tandem Excel and tridem Excel. So this is first part of the table and then this is the second part of the table. So just by considering the Excel load you can get the equivalence Excel load factor or the equivalency factor very easily corresponding to single Excel case tandem axle case and the tridem axle case. So you can see here that uh, corresponding to any axle uh, load you can get the load equivalency factor very very easily. And uh, you can see one interesting thing that uh, when you consider 18,000 pound axle load for single axle category. So you can see that the equivalence axle load factor is equal to 1 and it is right because 18,000 pound is the axle load for standard axle. Now look at the table 20.6. This is a complete table. And you can see here the design period from one year to 35 years have been considered, has been considered design period. And uh, this is the column when there is no growth. So in that case, you will have to use this column. Here 2% growth, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7, 8 and 10% respectively. So let's say you are having the 4% rate of growth. So what to do? This column is to be considered. And let's say you are considering a design period of 20 years. So what is the growth factor? The growth factor is 20.78. So this will be the growth factor in that case. That means corresponding to 4% rate of growth and 20 years design period. Now look at this example two. Uh, there are two parts for this example. If you just look at the part A and if you just read the statement, during the first year of service, a pavement, a rural interstate highway is expected to accommodate the following number of vehicles in the class is shown, estimate the equivalent single axle loads. So look at the vehicles, we are having these vehicles. And the number of vehicles are also mentioned. And then equivalent axle load factor. And uh, you can say the truck factor for different types of vehicles. You can get it from the table directly. So we have got these factors from the table and we have written it over here. You know equivalent single axle load that is the summation of the product of F sub i and N sub i. So you are having the number of vehicles, you are having the equivalency load factor or the equivalent axle load factor for the vehicle that is the truck factor. 
So just multiply these two things, this by this, this by this. So product of F sub i and N sub i, you can write over here and just add them together. So that is 78908. This is the equivalent single Excel load. Now there is one note which is given over here that equivalent single Excel load that is sometimes also called as ESA, equivalent standard Excels. That is equal to the summation of the product of F sub i and N sub i. And that can be written as that that is equal to the summation of the product of truck factors i into number of vehicles i. And you know the truck factor that is the equivalency factor for vehicle. Now, uh, you will have to consider this fact that uh, the above equivalent single axle load is for one year, that is for the first year. So keep this thing in the mind that uh, the equivalent single axle load that we have just determined that is meant for the first year of service. Now look at the part B of this problem. If the traffic using the pavement grows at an annual rate of 4%, determine the design equivalent single axle load for a 20 year design period. So solution of the second part, you will have to use this formula that equivalent single axle loads, <coughs> that means the design equivalent single axle load that is equal to this multiplied by T sub 1. And uh, this formula you can see T sub 1 that is the traffic volume during first year in terms of equal single axle load. We have already determined that. Or you know that is the rate of growth expressed as fraction and N means design period in years. So just by using the formula, just plug in the value, R is obviously 4 divided by 100, that means 0 0.04. And the design period is 20 years, so 20. And uh, then this thing will be multiplied by the T sub 1, that is the equivalent single axle load that you're having for the first year that we have determined in the first part of the problem. So answer of this is 29.778. So in fact, this is the growth factor. We have calculated the growth factor over here. When you will consult the table, which is meant for the growth factor, you will be getting the same value over there. It is being multiplied by 78908. So the answer is coming 2349729. So it means for the design period of uh, 20 years, the equal single axle loads are 2349729. Nine. And you can see here the calculation work is given for the growth factor and that is coming 29.78, that is this one. So you can conclude this thing that it means equal and single axle load uh, that we are considering for the design period of 20 years is about 30 times more than the equivalent single axle load for the first year because this factor is 29.78 so it means it's about 30. So it means equivalent single axle load for a design period of 20 years is about 30 times more than the equivalent single axle load for the first year. So in this way, uh, we have discussed the concept of uh, design process and uh, the determination of the equivalent single axle load. Thank you.